Welcome to the white coat ceremony for the entering class of 2009 at the University of Texas Medical School at Houston. I am obviously not Dr. Margaret McNeese, who is the Associate Dean for Student Admissions and Student Affairs. I'm Dr. Wallace Gleason, Assistant Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs. We're delighted to welcome members of the entering class and to have so many of you here this evening to witness the commitment of these young people to a life of compassionate service. Because this is meant to be a time for reflection on their commitment and new responsibilities, I must ask you to refrain from photography during the ceremony. There will be time to take pictures after the ceremony and a video recording of the proceedings will be available. It is now my pleasure to introduce all the other members of the stage party. Dr. Giuseppe Colasardo, Dean of the Medical School. Dr. Henry Strobel, Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs at the Medical School. Dr. Latanya Love, Special Assistant to the Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs. And our principal speaker for this evening. Dr. Sheila Lahodi, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs. Dr. Judy Ann Kellaway, Assistant Dean for Admissions. Dr. L. Maximilian Buya, Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs of the University of Texas of the Health Science Center. On the, on the second row, starting immediately to my right, Dr. Octavio Pinnell, Director of the Clerkship in Psychiatry. Dr. Patty J. Ross, Director of the Obstetrics Gynecology Clerkship. Dr. Eugene Toy, Director of the Obstetrics and Gynecology Clerkship at St. Joseph's Hospital. <laughs> Dr. Charles Kilpatrick, Director of the Obstetrics and Gynecology Clerkship at LBJ Hospital. <laughs> Dr. Aaron Fur Stimming, Director of the Neurology Clerkship. <laughs> Dr. Joanne Oakes, Director of the First Year Course in Introduction to Clinical Medicine. Dr. Kelly O'Brien, Director of the Second Year Course in Physical Diagnosis. I would now like to call on Dr. Henry Strobel to give the invocation. Please remain seated. Let us pray. O eternal God, bless all universities, colleges, and schools especially the University of Texas at Houston Med School of Medicine, that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. Bless those who teach and those who learn. Pour out your grace upon those who will wear for the first time this night the white coat of the student of medicine. May their white coats always remind them of their promise and charge to serve others and to learn the healing arts with fidelity and integrity. May they always perceive in what they learn those things which serve the well-being of those in need who come to them for aid. In the name of God, amen. Thank you, Dr. Strobel. The Arnold P. Gold Foundation, founded in 1988 to address the importance of compassionate patient care and medical education, was the moving force behind the first white coat ceremony, which was held at Columbia University's College of Physicians and Surgeons in 1993. Assisted by a grant from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Gold Foundation has provided support to many other medical schools in the country in establishing their own white coat ceremony tradition. Most United States allopathic and osteopathic schools of medicine have such a ceremony. I would like to now to call on the Dean of the Medical School, Dr. Giuseppe Colasardo. Thank you, Dr. Gleason. It is my great pleasure to welcome the entering class of 2009 and your loved ones to this white coat ceremony. After a day of orientation activities that probably felt very much like uh, college again, you new medical students are now assuming symbolically 
a different identity as physicians in training. The difficult part, of course, is assimilating this new identity, even as your day-to-day -day routine, at least for the next year or two, may not be very different from your undergraduate life. Most of you will come to class in jeans, t-shirts, and flip-flops. And on your special occasions, you will be asked to dress up and wear your white coat. But even more important than the white coat is the student's commitment to uphold the principles outlined in the student's ethical pledge. I challenge you this evening to take the personalized copy of the pledge, which you will receive before you sign the register, and review it from time to time. When the studying and test-taking routine becomes tiresome and difficult, and when the prospect of becoming a fully trained physician seems impossibly distant, remind yourself that you are gradually, day by day, fulfilling the commitment that you began this day to become the most knowledgeable, most compassionate, and most honorable physician you can be. There are no shortcuts on this journey. However, the administration and faculty are here to support you along the way. Let me remind you of our faculty's advice for a positive journey as we welcome you today to our great medical school. Dr. Frank Arnett, one of our stellar faculty members, a renowned rheumatologist, said that what this school provides is opportunity. Everyone has the chance to succeed here. Our president, Larry Kaiser, symbolized the optimism of this institution and speaks of the unlimited skies of this largest and most comprehensive health science center in the Southwest. Dr. Henry Strobel has taught us to remember the three C's, communication, collaboration, and courtesy. Dr. Denton Cooley wisely told us the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. Our good friend Dr. Fred said, our students have a tremendous opportunity here. Our patient population at Memorial Hermann at LBJ General Hospital is incomparable in the world. Better than Hopkins, better than Boston. Don't avoid difficult patients and don't be intimidated by our faculty. They're there for you and they're there to share the gift of experience. Dr. Red Duke, our famous trauma surgeon, wrote to me, it is always my intention to attempt to treat others, be they patients, colleagues, or strangers, with the dignity and respect that I can best determine would be their desire. I have never considered this some special behavior, just the manner in which an individual would relate to another human being. That was right, Duke. Finally, let me take this opportunity to thank our students, parents, and loved ones for the contribution in shaping their lives and sending them on their way to this extraordinary educational experience. You can take get great pride for this, and I promise we will take good care of them. We hope and expect that you will enjoy medical school and make many good friends. But above all, remember that today, by virtue of the commitment you have accepted and the pledge you have made, you are not the same person you were yesterday. At this time, I will turn the podium back to Dr. Gleason. Thank you, Dr. Colasardo. 
Our principal speaker tonight is Dr. LaTanya Love. She's a relatively new member of the dean's staff, but not new to the medical school. She's a magna cum laude graduate of Howard University. She received her MD degree from our sister institution, UTMB in Galveston. She did her residency in medicine and pediatrics here and is now board certified in both specialties. After a year as chief resident in pediatrics, she joined the faculty in 2005 as an assistant professor and became medical director of the student health clinic in 2006. She also serves as an associate medical director of the Texas-Mexico Border Health Projects, which has a mobile health van in one of the poorest areas of the state and provides primary health care to children and families. Last fall, Dr. Love was named special assistant to the dean for admissions and student affairs, and one of her first assignments was to work, out, work with our second year students preparing for the United States Medical Licensing Examination that you will hear for, uh, about, lovingly referred to as the USMLE. Please help me welcome Dr. LaTanya Love. Good evening. I am very humbled and honored to have the opportunity to speak to you all on this very important day in your careers. I can vividly remember my own white coat ceremony back in 1996 and how excited I was on that day. As so many of your parents, I can remember how proud my mother and father were as they witnessed the symbolic ceremony that started off my road to practicing medicine. Now I have to tell you, when I was first asked to speak to you, the wonderful class of 2013, I was a little nervous about it. I was not very sure what I was gonna talk to you all about. Then I was talking to the wonderful Pat Caver, and she said, LaTanya, just speak from your heart and you'll be fine. So I went home and I thought about it, and I said, you know, speaking from my heart shouldn't be too difficult. My name is Dr. Love after all. So today, I'm just going to speak to you from my heart and share with you all some lessons that I have learned wearing my white coat. Today, some of you may be a little nervous and anxious. Others of you are excited and confident. You're happy, you're ready to start your medical school careers. You're happy that all of your hard work has paid off and led you to where you are today. Whether you are nervous or confident, Remember that it is no mistake that you are here today. You are here because you deserve to be here, and we are confident in your abilities to succeed. You all are entering medicine at a time when we really don't know what the future of medicine may be like. You can't turn on the TV, open up the newspaper without reading about the potential changes in our healthcare system. Although some aspects of healthcare may change over time, some things hopefully will remain the same. One of those things is the power of the white coat and the lessons that you can learn every day while you are wearing it. My grandfather was the first African-American physician to practice medicine in Beaumont, Texas. While medicine was quite different when he practiced in the 1930s, perhaps he made house calls, he didn't take insurance like we do today, and sometimes he would take a loaf of bread or a dozen eggs as a form of payment. If he had a patient with abdominal pain, he had to rely on his history and physical examination skills because CT scan machines and x-ray machines were not readily available as they are today. Although the way that we practice medicine today is slightly different than the way my grandfather practiced, and possibly the future of medicine will be a little bit different, Again, some things will never change, and that will be the power and the symbolism of the white coat. When you put on your white coat, you are instantly granted trust by your patients. Your patients may share with you information that they may not tell anyone else. When you put on your white coat, your patients and their families put trust and confidence in your abilities to seek while they are seeking care for whatever ailment or issue they may have. So now I would like to briefly share with you a few important lessons that I have learned in the almost 10 years since I've graduated from medical school and practiced medicine. First, when you wear your white coat, remember you are part of a larger medical team. That team will be made up of other physicians, support staff such as nurses and therapists, and most important, the patient. 
While you are on this team, remember that your roles may change at various times. As a medical student, perhaps your role might just be to take a detailed history and physical examination. At times, your role may be to comfort the patients, and other times your role might be to assist in a surgery or a procedure. There will be times when your role will be the leader of the medical team. There will be other times when your role will be educator. You will teach your patients about their disease and their treatment options. There will be times when you will be the student and perhaps learn something from a seasoned nurse or more importantly, your patient. Remember that your patients are the ultimate teachers and make sure you take advantage of this. I can't tell you how many lessons I have learned from my patients. I learned from a nine-year-old cancer patient that you can be resilient and you can put a smile on your face even when you're having a bad day. I learned from a 24-year-old woman recently diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer that all of our patients don't fit the textbooks. I learned that some of the best medicine that you can give is just listening to your patients. Another lesson that I have learned from wearing my white coat is to not be afraid to ask for help. There are several times in my career when perhaps I was a little unsure of my patient's diagnosis or if I was providing the best treatment options for them. That is when I will turn to my colleagues and ask for their help and ask for their opinions and thoughts. I want you to do the same thing. I want you to ask for help if you are a little unsure of some of the coursework that you are being taught. I want you to ask for help if you ever recognize a patient might not be doing so well and you're a little unsure of what the next step might be. Remember that asking for help is not a weakness, but actually a strength, as you were strong enough to recognize that you needed it. The final lesson I would like to leave you with is that you must do your best, not just some of the time, but all of the time. You owe this to your patients, and you owe this to yourselves. This will begin Monday when you start your classes. I want you to start off your medical school career with a bang. You have a very strong support system here at UT Houston, and don't be afraid to take advantage of it. If you need a tutor, just ask for one. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the rigors of medical school, don't be afraid to talk with a counselor or come visit me over in the student health clinic. Today, your coat is clean and it shows no signs of wear or tear. However, this will change over the next four years of your life. When you start your clinical rotations, this coat may be somewhat of a support system for you. You will carry tools in your pockets, such as stethoscopes and reflex hammers, so that you can perform an adequate physical examination. You may carry many textbooks in your coat so that you can look up information when you are around. Perhaps you might even put a little snack in your pocket that may be the only thing you get to eat because you were scrubbed in on a six-hour surgery. Your coat may even perhaps get a little stained because you were performing a procedure and got a little bit of blood on it. Regardless of the status of your white coat, at the end of your four years, I want you to never forget the lessons that you have learned. And I want you to remember the most important thing is that you treat each of your patients with dignity, compassion, and respect. Treat each of your patients the same way you would want someone to treat your family member. In closing, I would like to leave you with a quote by Robert Collier. Visualize this thing you want. See it, feel it, believe it. Make your mental blueprint and begin. Today, I want you to see your dream of becoming a physician. Feel it and believe it because now you are finally on the road to achieving it. Congratulations and welcome to our UT Houston family. Thank you. Good evening. As Dr. Colasurdo mentioned, at the University of Texas Medical School at Houston, we require that each entering student sign a student ethical pledge expressing the values of this institution with particular reference to the undergraduate portion of the physician's lifelong education. Students, by signing the book that is displayed at the front of the stage, you are committing yourselves to 
of brightness and honor in your academic and professional lives, and respect and compassion in your relationship with patients. Several years ago, in an effort to stimulate awareness of academic integrity issues, the dean met with the student body, class by class. Out of these meetings came the idea for what is now known as the Student Committee for Academic Integrity and Professionalism, also known as SCAPE for short. Student volunteers representing all four class levels spent long hours discussing how best to address these concerns. Two subcommittees were formed, a process group to oversee student input into reported cases of academic dishonesty, and an education group to develop ways to stimulate a continuing dialogue on integrity and professionalism among the student body. Tonight, we have invited representatives of the Student Committee on Academic Integrity and Professionalism to read the class, the Student Ethical Pledge. Here we have Chika Nanquo and Brian Ibarbo. I acknowledge and accept the privileges and responsibilities given to me today as a physician in training and dedicate myself to provide care to those in need. I will approach all aspects of my education with honesty and integrity, embracing opportunities to learn from patients, teachers, and colleagues. I will always maintain the highest standards of professional conduct. I will certify only that which I have personally verified, and I will neither receive nor give unauthorized assistance on examinations. I will value the knowledge and wisdom of the physicians who have preceded me. I will recognize my weaknesses and strengths and strive to develop those qualities that will earn the respect of my patients, my colleagues, my family, and myself. I will respect the humanity, rights, and decisions of all patients and will attend to them with compassion and without bias. I will maintain patient confidentiality and be tactful in my words and actions. I will value the diversity of patients' experiences, cultures, and beliefs because it enhances my ability to care for them and enriches my education. I will not forget that there is an art to medicine as well as a science and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding are integral to patient care. I will strive to earn the trust of my patients' place in me and the respect that society places in my profession. I recognize the privileges afforded to me as a physician in training and promise not to abuse them. Even as a student, I have a responsibility to improve the standard of health in my community, to increase access to care for all the underserved, and to advance medical knowledge. As I accept these new responsibilities, I will not forget the importance of my own health and well-being. I will continue to value my relations with those who have supported me in the past and those who will share in my future. Knowing my own limitations and those of medicine, I commit myself to a lifelong journey of learning how to cure, relieve, and comfort with humility and compassion. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Thank you. The most tangible symbol of the responsibility and commitment assumed by you, the students, today is that of the white coat of the physician in training. I will ask that you come to the stage as I read your name to don your white coat. As you leave the stage, you will sign the ethical pledge book and be given a personalized copy to take with you. Marianne Abenobi. Benjamin Arkar. Jillian Alex. Matthew Altman. 
David Altuna, Ellen Amrock, Akila Amsevilu, Aldo Andino, Linda Aririrguzu, Kenan Athreya, Mark Barros, Charles Beeman, Anne Berry, Amit Bhakta, Nikhil Bargava, Jacob Birnbaum, Brian Blagrand, Jason Bluth, Mark Bambuli, Rachel Bauman, Laura Bradley, Jeffrey Brecky, Gareth Bridge, Brian Brimage, Jason Brown, Ryan Brown, Sabrina Brown, John Burleson, Ashley Burns, Sean Burry, David Button, Jennifer Cairo, Kate, Katie Canalicchio, Samuel Carson, Rachel Cavanaugh, Weston Kaywood, Amanda Cernisek, Natalie Chavaria, Monica Chen, Michael Chirillo, Sean Chislett, Zachary Compton, Joshua Coney, Mark Cooper, <laughs> slow down, Brooke Corning, William Covington, Andrew Coyne, Jacob Davis, Brian Deaver, Melissa Defoe, Veena Devarajan, Michael DeSano, David Doherty, Darren Donathan, Alexander Doyle, Nicola Dundas, Vipul Durkel, Christine Ellis, Harold Ellsworth, 
David Espinoza. Lisa Evans. Michael Evans. Sarah Evans. Justin Fang. Erica Farber. Jeffrey Farnham. Russell Fetzer. Daniel Frank. Cynthia Gallegos. Jay Gandhi. I'm going to slow you down for a second again. Ricardo Garcia. Victoria Gascoigne. Jonathan Gerber. Travis Goodale. Aniradha Goparaju. John Granger. Megan Greer. Azir Greeson. James Greamy. John Griepentrog. Emily Grimshaw. Mary Gerges. Ashley Gunter. Brian Hannes. Stephen Harding. David Harrington. Richard Harris. Landon Hatfield. Seth Hayes. George Heberton. Jessica Hellams. Joel Hendricks. Alicia Hernandez. Lori Hernandez. Matthew Herrick. Stephen Herman. Hans Hyman. Michelle Hong. Stephen Hong, Haley Horton, James Hovis, Amanda Howe, Hi, good. How are you? Ari Hyman, Joseph Ifoque. Margaret Jackson. Rochelle Jones. Matthew Kaufman. Molly Keegan. Keith Kerr. 
Thomas Kessinger, Micah Nobles, Amy Cott, Jeffrey Krivolovic, Mary Kruger, Nathaniel Quack, Anna Marie Lakara, Trung Lee, Andy Lee, Michelle Lee, David Long, Adrian Lord, Eduardo Luna, Charles Lundquist, Daniel McDougall, Rohit Maney, Yasmin Maldonado, Willie Marquez, Zachary Marshall, Zane Martindale, Ian Martinez, Angel Mata, and Hel Marta. McAlpin, Lindsay McAlpin, Jacob McCoy, Megan McIntosh, John McLean, Joel Mendez, Dmitry Mezhkov, Omar Metwali, John Michael, Matthew Miller, Michael Miller, Thomas Mings, Jessica Moore, Judson Moore, Lindsay Morgan, Paul Morrison, Sarah Mulner, Brian Nehas, Stacy Nays, yes, Kenneth Neff, Elizabeth Netherton, Hi Wynn, Leanne Wynn, Laura Norris. Jorge Novo, Uzandu Usuegua, Priyanka Parekh, Andrew Peters, Margaret Pfeiffer, Nock Pham, Nicholas Phillips, Chandu Pillai, Kevin Pyro, 
Erica Press, Zaid Radwan, Uma Ramaswamy, Allison Ramsey, Neethi Reddy, Rachel Rigoni, Christopher Reinhackel, Alexander Reskala, Nelly Rivas, Jose Romero, Paul Roncal, Brittany Roy, Benny Rush, Aaron Russell, hey. Reem Sabuni, Dean Sagun, Siru Salvati, Brittany Sombrano, Mad Madeline Samuelson, Jenna Sassy, David Savage, Kellen Schallert, John Schwartz, Katherine Seeger, Krishna Shaw, Christopher Schenk, James Shaw, Jason Sherb, Yusra Siddiqui, Selena Singh, Frank Scobel, Sarah Slabasak, Ian Smith, Catherine Smith, Carolyn Spidell, Preston Spindle, Charles Stevens, Jonathan Stout, Agath Streif, Christopher Stroud, Tiffany Tizano. Richard Thompson, Chung Fi Tu, Chung Fi Tu, Jessica Trevino, Allison Trope, Emily Turner, Matthew Tyler. Isaac Van Slickenhorst. <laughs> Minnie Varghese. Veronica Vitone. Alexander Wainwright. Elise Walker. Emily Walker. Clint Walters, Yuen Wang, Mohammed Wazni, Nathan Webb, Jeremy Wetzel,
Ann Williams. Thornton Williams. Anise Wilson. Adam Wolf. Stephen Woods. Jamie Shu. Cynthia Yabar. Thank you very much. I would now like to ask Dr. Colasardo to lead the students in the Hippocratic Oath. Would the entering class of 2009 please rise? Members of the medical profession are endowed with the right to invite the minds and bodies of strangers. This is a tremendous power conferred upon no other profession. And as we've all seen much too often and much too recently, with such power comes the danger of abuse. Around 400 BC, Hippocrates, considered by many to be the father of Western medicine, recognized that danger and wrote an oath of conduct that has become the hallmark of the medical profession and has been professed in various forms by many physicians for more than 2,000 years. I now have the honor of administering this oath to our entering students aspiring to become physicians. Although it has been sanitized and modernized to remove the swearing to Apollo and other passages that might be considered impolite, this oath still binds physicians to a code of civilized conduct demanded of those entrusted with the healing of the sick. Please repeat after me. I do solemnly swear by whatever I hold most sacred that I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members. that I will lead my life and practice my profession in uprightness and honor and into whatsoever house I shall enter. It shall be for the good of the sick to the utmost of my power holding myself far aloof from wrong, from corruption, from the tempting of others to vice, that I will exercise my profession solely for the cure of my patients, and will give no drug, perform no operation, 
for a criminal purpose, even if solicited, far less suggested, that whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of men which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. These things do I swear. And now should I be true to this my oath? May prosperity and good repute be ever mine. The opposite should I prove myself or sworn. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the entering class of 2009 of the University of Texas Medical School at Houston. We are very confident they will make us all proud, and this concludes our ceremony. Thank you for being here. Congratulations, and good evening.